Hey guys, Capper here. Something cool happened. We got a we got a personalized handwritten card from the president of Bush Hog Corporation, Jerry Worthington, and it was all handwritten. Um, he was just basically congratulating us on our retirement farm here in Illinois. He saw the uh, article in Rural Lifestyle Dealer magazine a few years ago. Um, but that's really that's really old school. I'll, I'll show you the letter. It's usually nowadays it's email, you know, or text or fax or whatever. But uh, I just want to say thanks to Jerry for uh, noticing us. We appreciate it, and thanks for the letter. And he sent several bush hog uh, patriotic hats for being a veteran, and a couple of veteran pins to boot. So we just thought that was really nice. Special thanks, Jerry. We appreciate that. So. Let's keep moving on the vlog. Thanks a lot. Okay, so about a week ago, planting one of our Illinois food plots, this drag that I've been using for years and years and years, I snagged on a stump. Well, my very last pass in this, and of course this is the first plot we're doing, I got caught on a stump. Dang it. All right, so I hit a stump with this drag and it really knocked this front double bar out. <clears throat> so this is the way I'm gonna try to get it at least somewhat straight. I got the tractor with all its weight on the front and I got the excavator. I'm gonna just try and gently pull that back at least close to straight because uh, that's too much for me to try and straighten in my shop, you know, by hand. So we'll see what happens. Okay, a quick update on the Bobcat uh, T650 and the Blue Diamond brush cutter. So if you watched one of the last videos of brush clearing, I blew a hydraulic line on the brush cutter, which should be fine. That should be covered under warranty, but at the same time, my Bluetooth wasn't working, so I told them to check on that. Um, the Bluetooth worked, but nobody could hear me talking, so I thought, well, maybe the microphone wire vibrated loose. Yeah. This is what they found when they tore it all apart. Freaking mice chewing it all up. So anyways, do you think that'll be covered under warranty? I highly doubt it. So this will set me back a little bit. But man, do we have mouse issues with our machines here. So let's get back to the vlog. I should have the skid steer back here in a day or two. Back in action. So I recently got this buck back. Um, I was letting them use it at one of the new sports shops here in the area. It was a new startup and they ended up closing so I just got it back. But this, I think this might have been the first one I got on this property here in Illinois. It was a really nice eight pointer. So uh, I gotta find a new spot for this bad boy in the basement. Might have to make some new wall space. Not too bad, I think I can work with that. A few welds in there and I think I could salvage it for a while. All right, so uh, today's the 31st of August. I got all of my seed here. I parked the Polaris inside because we're getting intermittent showers, to keep all this stuff dry. But I got the Rhino hooked on. I'm gonna try and till and see if it's not gonna be too wet because we got more rain coming tonight. This is just nuts, August. We've been having like rain every three days. Let's take the rhino out and see how it goes. I'm tilling this plot. So 
I might melt my clamp a little bit, but this is what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna suck it back together in a half a dozen spots and tack everything back down and it should be pretty good. I mean, it took a vicious hit. I'm surprised it didn't tear it apart, but that says good things about my welding over the years because I welded this whole thing together. All right, we got that patch back together. I got everything I need for the first like three steps of the plot. And the last step will be small seed. So I got big seed, I got winter wheat, and I got a bag of fertilizer in there. Then I got clover and, ch and chicory mix for one half and brassica mix for the other. That's after the drag and then the cultipacker. So I might sneak one in, we'll see. My favorite part of food plotting right here is running the cultipacker in the Polaris with the air on. This is perfect dirt. You should see the lines very well. It's a little bit moist. Absolutely beautiful. I went over it three times with the cultipacker. We still need rain. It is a little moist, but not quite moist enough for the small seeds to germinate. So if we get rain, I mean they've been calling for rain every third day, so if they're right. Oh come on, you're barking. Bring some rain, man. Don't just talk. Bring it. Do it. Prove the radar to be correct. Feed my brand new food plot. Oh yeah. This should bring a lot of good memories this fall, hopefully. Guess we're gonna find out. All right, well, we saw the radar and it looked a lot worse than what we actually got. Yeah, this is what is showing, but there ain't anything actually happening out there. There ain't really much rain coming down. So we'll see here. I mean, we're already into it, and it ain't, it ain't hardly raining at all. So this is why I don't trust radar. It's still kind of drizzling, but this might be just enough to wet all of the small seeds on top, push them down into those furrows of the cultipacker, and maybe give that brand new plot a new start. But fingers crossed. Come on, give us some moisture. Pretty please. But either way, it's going to boost the other three food plots that we got in about a week ago. So it is definitely welcome. So definitely stay tuned.